Hi. Take a look at this field behind me. You see anything in it? Looks empty, doesn't it? Look more closely. See that? That's asparagus. Why am I standing in an asparagus field? Well, it's asparagus season, I guess. I had the pleasure of trying some of the very first asparagus that came out of this field on Wednesday. Um, our Zena always saves the first harvest for the farm, and I guess I'm part of the farm, which is cool. Have you ever had freshly picked asparagus? It's amazing. So last week, I gave you a primer on weeding, and it's really, really easy, you know, you just brush, brush the soil and all the weeds come out. Well, that's what happens if you get them when they're small. This week, I found out what happens if you don't get them when they're small. This here is a, a pile of clover I ripped out of this potato field, and I have a new appreciation for why farmers use clover as a cover crop. The roots, they go super deep. They're an absolute pain in the ass to pull out, but I'm sure they're bringing up all sorts of good nutrients from the soil down below. These aren't weeds. This is a shout out to Martin, who saw the arugula that I harvested last time and was drooling over because he couldn't find arugula in the city. Sorry, Martin. I just ripped all this arugula out. We're replacing it with, well, I don't know what we're replacing it with, but uh, something tasty, I'm sure. But uh, the arugula's gone. You know, having that asparagus on Wednesday kind of brought things full circle for me. Because this project, it started with asparagus. Let me tell you the story. Back in 2015 or 2016, I fell in love with a farmer. Well, an aspiring farmer. She was in farm school. And one of the things she had to do for school was make a farm business plan. And her farm was going to be an asparagus farm. And uh, me being the business-minded fellow that I am, she showed me her business plan, and my reaction was, well, the first rule of business is you pay yourself first. And I can see from this budget that you've made, you're not paying yourself anything. So you might wanna look at that. And uh, her response to me was, well, that's not how it works in farming. Farming, you kinda just take whatever money's left at the end of the year. And that got me thinking, you know, what kind of a business is farming that you only get paid if everything goes right at the end of the year? You know, what, if the people growing our food can't make a living, what are we doing? I mean, that was the question. That got me rolling on this whole The Hands That Feed Us project. Anyway, I mentioned that to her this week and I found out that not only was it a turning point in my life, it was also a turning point in hers. Because apparently, that project convinced her that she didn't actually want to be a farmer because, well, she couldn't make a living at it. That's really depressing. I feel kind of guilty. I mean, what if I'd been sort of nicer or less harsh in how I'd responded to the business plan? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, that's taking on too much, I guess. It was her business plan, she knew what was in it. But, you know, kind of made me think. Anyway, my question for you this week is, have you ever had fresh asparagus freshly picked from a field? Or is the only asparagus you've ever had that wooden stuff from Mexico? I just want to do a poll here. Find out if any of you have had the pleasure that I had this week. I hope you have. In other news, I finished the capitalism and farming article that I mentioned in my last one. So go to thehandsthatfeedus.ca to check that out. Um, if you would just want to enjoy these videos, you can uh, subscribe to the channel or uh, follow the project on Facebook. Or I swear I will eventually get around to figuring out Instagram because we're on Instagram. Um, but for the time being, the best place to follow us is YouTube and Facebook. See you next week.